Morning, everybody. Thanks for coming today. Can everyone hear me all right? Yeah, we're good? Awesome. I've never had one of the wrap around the ear ones before. It's bizarre. Uh, my name is Jill Carter. I'm a senior product manager with Dynamics 365 for talent, uh, focusing on the core HR piece. And today what we're going to talk about is integrating with finance and operations. We'll walk through a couple of slides just from a diagram perspective of kind of showing you what the flow looks like. And then also we'll take a look at the templates. We will see the data moving from talent to CDS to finance and operations and kind of what that flow looks like in the next 20 minutes or so. From an integration perspective, even though the session is titled Integrating Talent with Finance and Operations, it's actually the integration It's actually going from uh, talent into the common data service. Once it's in the common data service, so there's the, the, the sync between talent and the common data service. Once it's in the common data service, it's actually using data integrator. And from data integrator is what is writing it then into finance and operations. And it's actually creating a data package, so a regular DMF package on the, on the finance and operations side that gets picked up by a batch, processed, and brought through. So when we talk about the, the integration, it's really going through from a CDS perspective. Uh, and if any of you were in the session before that was talking about Power Apps and the Admin Center, that's where we're gonna spend the bulk of our time today because that's where a lot of that integration is configured. Since we are going not directly from the talent database to the finance and operations database, we've got that stop in the middle with CDS. The entities that exist in CDS from a talent perspective don't, aren't one-to-one -to, -one to what those entities are in finance and operations. And so you can see here there are a couple that uh, either are split out or combined. So for example, in talent and in the CDS, worker is split, worker and worker address are split out where that's all just into worker within finance and operations. Job goes to job. Uh, position is called job position in CDS. So that's where you see job position. Employment as well. There's a single entity in CDS for employment, whereas in finance and operations, it's split into employment and employment detail. Position work assignment department, again, are just one-to-one -one into, uh, into those entities. This is basically what the template looks like from a, from a higher level, not the individual fields, but this is what the mapping looks like. There are this many tasks, and we'll take a look at those in just a minute, within the, uh, within the template itself. The template can be modified. It's a template. It provides a base to get a base worker moved across into finance and operations. There can be, if you have other entities, if you've created custom entities on the finance and operations side, if you have other data that you want to push across, if you've created custom fields or something like that in talent, and th those will move across, you can update that template to be able to move that data across. If you noticed, if we go back to this slide for just a second, you can see that through here, we're showing back and forth. This syncs real time across. It syncs across here, but you'll notice that the arrows are pointing this way only from CDS with an optional back. One of the questions that we get a lot is, uh, I want to be able to write from finance and operations into CDS and have that show up in talent. The, template, the default template is writing out. There is a template to write back that's blank if you'd like to use it. The one thing that we caution with that is when you're trying to dual master, things, whatever the last one into CDS is the one that wins. So if you've got someone updating something in finance and operations, same record getting updated in talent, whoever the last one in is going to win. So you need to make sure to keep that in mind if you are going to be doing that right back from finance and operations into CDS. Okay, let's switch over and take a look at the integration itself. So within the, the Power Apps, there's a, the Power Apps piece and then there's the Admin Center. When we look at data, we need to make sure that we have a connection between the two systems. And so you can see from a connection perspective, here's my CDS connection, here's my Finance and Operations connection. Those two things are needed first. That'll be the first thing that you do. Once you have those connections, then you can go start creating projects, importing the template, modifying the template if you need to. So we're now switching into the admin center piece of, of the integration. Under the data integration tab, and this will look, um, 
different with the new preview of the admin center. There's some other features are coming, but from a data integration perspective, you can see here that I have projects. Projects contain the connection, they contain the template, they contain uh, some of the, the schedule. Those kinds of things are all part of the, part of the project. The connection set, is what's giving you that connection between the two systems and providing the, that information. So if you think about uh, from a, our connection is going from the common data service, here's the user that's being used, here's the user that's being used for finance and operations, here are the organizations that are being passed across, and here's an integration key. The integration key when you create the project and when you import the template are automatically put in there by default. If you are changing the template, you may have to update some integration keys in here, but for the most part, it should be just work when you import the template. You can see here it gives you kind of what the common data service is and then some of the, the, uh, the entities that are associated with those. I can create a new project in here. When I create a new project, this is what it'll give you um, a name and then you'll have to pick the template. We're gonna look at one that's already created, but I just wanna give you an idea of what it looks like from a creating a project perspective. Hopefully. Let's take a look at one that's already been created. So here's my, my template or my project that I've created for finance and operations, connecting from CDS. eventually. Uh, what we're going to look at from a demo perspective while, from a flow perspective while the template is pulling up, is we're going to take a look at just a simple subset of the, of the template just to see data flow across. What we're going to focus on is our job function. So you can see here I am in talent. Let me switch my company here. <clears throat> So we're looking at the same stuff. Here's what we have in talent. If we go back into Power Apps and look at our entities here, we can take a look at the job function entity. We'll see that the same job functions exist here as they do in CDS. Here are those same job functions. When we look at finance and operations, you'll see right now we have the same all the way across. Come on. It's gonna be a pretty fast demo if I can't find get the template to open or the project to open. So here are the connections that we have created for this particular, uh, this particular project. You can see it's using those same connections. Again, here are the organizations and that integration key. When I open up the project itself or create a new one, here you choose your connection set. Once you choose your connection set, it will pull that in. Then I'm able to see the template. So you can see here are there's 13 or 14 different tasks within that template. And basically they're mapping the entity that's in the common data service to a corresponding entity in finance and operations based on that connection that you have created. So when I had mentioned before, if you've got custom entities on the finance and operations side, they will show up in the list here when you go to uh, your destination. So we've got our task name, we've got the source, they'll all start with common data service. All of the core HR entities within the common data service are pre uh, have a prefix of CDM on them, so you'll know that those are the ones that you want to choose. And then you'll have the, the destination is your finance and operations entity. Within there, there's also a map. So if we were to choose, for example, the job function map, 
you can see here that there's only a couple of fields that are getting passed across. The job function entity is fairly small. It only has two fields on it to begin with. So from a map perspective, we can say the name, equal, the name in CDS equals the name in the job function ID within finance and operations. And it's as simple as that when it comes from a mapping perspective. So as you're adding fields there or you're modifying the template, you can choose the function here, whether it's an equal, whether you're doing some advanced type of query to filter things out, you can do that within the template as well to get some of the other information that you, that you want to have included. For these uh, integration projects, you can schedule them to recur on whatever kind of basis that you want. Again, since we are going from talent to CDS to finance and operations, it's not going to be real time. Depending on the amount of data you have, you probably don't want to schedule this to run every five minutes, maybe not even every 30 minutes. It just depends on how often that data needs to go across into uh, finance and operations. You can also see the execution history for these, if they have ran, uh, the last time they ran, if there was an error, all of that is available to you within the Common Data Service. Let me see if it's started to behave itself yet. So we can actually see what it looks like. There we go. So here again is, are those tasks. When I go into the map, you can see that here. If there are other fields, when I do the drop down, if there are other fields that you'd like to see in here, this is where you can choose those fields on any of these tasks, or you can create a new task with a new entity if you're wanting to bring something else across that isn't uh, included in the original template. Uh, the thing to keep in mind is the data has to be in the common data service in order for you to be able to add it and push it across. Uh, things like today, for example, skills aren't available in the CDS yet. So you wouldn't be able to map skills to skills within finance and operations. Once those entities are added, then you're able to push those across. And for each one of these, you can see that there is uh, our 15 or so. This is the third version of the template. So when you're out and creating those projects, there'll be a 1.1 or 1.2 version. That's the one that you're going to want to use. Uh, when you're going out and creating these, uh, creating these projects. If we were to look at Worker, for example, that's one of the largest entities. You'll see there's a whole ton of different fields that are being pushed across. And so those ones look a little bit different. Uh, this one is a little bit different, has more information on it than, for example, the, uh, the job function, the one that we looked at. Let's go ahead and, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new job function here. We'll watch it sync into CDS, and then I'll go ahead and run the, the project that I have to push it into finance and operations. So let's go ahead and create a new job function. We'll go ahead and save that one. And let's go take a look at the project that I have created for this. <coughs> You can see here I have just a job function project that all it has is the job functions to compensation job function. And how I created this project was I added the template, the CDS to finance and operations template, and I deleted all the other tasks. So you can also do a subset. However you want to change these templates, create new projects, you can do all of that uh, in order to get it to go across. So let's go ahead and refresh our data over here to see if our new job function that we added has been included. There's our new 1200 that we added, the MBAS one. It's not going to be over here yet because I haven't run that, run that job. So let's go ahead and run this project. You can see now it's currently running. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna take the data that's in CDS, it's gonna create a data management package that we'll see in finance and operations, and then it's gonna have a batch job, pick that up and process it. So really from a technology perspective, you'll be able to go in if there are issues or errors, you'll get errors in, um, you'll see those within the task itself, within the project, but you'll also be able to go into finance and operations as you do today with any of your data management projects and be able to see that information as well. So if we go into data management here, let's see if our job has, our project has been created and come across.
there's our new job function import and the status is that it's complete. So if we refresh over here, we should see our new job function come across. Integration demos are so exciting as you watch data flow from one system to another. There's our new one that we created, right? So as you go through it, again, from a scheduling perspective, keep in mind the amount of data, what's in your project, what's in that template, the data that you're pushing across, and you'll want to keep that in mind. Some of the other things to consider, we'll just flip back to the deck here for a second. When we're thinking about this integration, again, I had mentioned templates can be modified. When you import that template, you can, and you create your project and import it, you can modify that template, you can Make sure that it has the fields that you need. Maybe you want to remove stuff. Maybe you don't need to have everything. So that template is just that. It's a starting point for you to move forward depending on what the customer needs or what uh, kind of integrations it is that you're building. One thing when it comes to employment, only active employments are, are integrated across. Within the CDS, it's the, basically the current record and if there's some historical, uh, historical employments will come across or historical information will come across, but anything future dated isn't going to be in the CDS until it becomes active. So that's one thing to keep in mind as well. Advanced query, uh, we didn't take a look at that, but it's a function of the data integration framework, can be used to uh, reshape the source data. If you're wanting to do something a little bit different with the data, you want to have, um, you want to filter to specific jobs or positions or whatever, you can do that and filter within within the template as well. It's create and update only, there is no delete. So if you delete something out of talent uh, and it deletes it out of CDS, it's not gonna delete it out of finance and operations. The data integration doesn't uh, support deletes at this point. The first run is gonna be a full run of everything. Everything that's in your talent that you have included in your template will go. After that, it's looking for inserts, it's looking for changes using change tracking to be able to pull across just the changes. And the first thing, uh, one of the first things that I mentioned was the data needs to be in the CDS to integrate with finance and operations. If it's not in the CDS, it's not gonna go across. So if, again, if the entities aren't there, also if you don't have a matching entity somewhere to put it on the finance and operations side, you have to have something on the back end to be able to push that data into. There has to be an entity there, whether that's an out of the box finance and operations entity or a custom entity that you've built for integration scenarios for third party systems, those kinds of things, if you're pulling that data across. All of, the, uh, all of this information plus more detail about it is in this integration FAQ that's available out on docs.microsoft.com, as well as what the template looks like, what the source is, uh, all of that is then in that second topic, which is the integrate with F Dynamics 365 for finance and operations. So everything that was in this deck that we walked through is actually out and documented on our um, documentation site. So we walked through the project, 20 minutes is really short, but we walk through the uh, understanding what needs to be done from a connection perspective, that you can update templates, that's an out of the box template, the data is flowing from CDS into finance and operations, it creates that data management package that you can then uh, verify and make sure that everything is coming across as you'd expected, and then writing that data across. 